When the communist hordes are pounding at the gates, you'll want a combat engineer to greet them with a storm of high caliber rounds. I'm about to show y'all just how strong the MG emplacement can be when it's combined with a couple of auto cannons and some good placement. Welcome to the SES Emperor of Democracy. My name is Commissar Kai, and today we're gonna be looking at how to play an engineer role with a team of random squad mates. Ever since they received the super duct tape upgrades, sentries of all types can now take a heap of punishment while doling it back out in kind. Will we set up our sentries well and back them up with the AC-8 autocannon and a couple of Eagle airstrikes, it does not matter how many clankers come a-running. We'll have plenty of lead for all of them. We'll be setting up defenses for our squad whenever they want to fight and covering their retreat whenever they want to move. Either way, we'll be in the center of the action, backing our squad up every step of the way. Now that you know what the video is about, Let's drop in and spill some oil. Now this one's gonna be a bit of a hot drop, so before we get into the loadout, let me give you all the situation. We've dropped in on a gunship tower and a mortar pit with a bot drop being called in. This is a whole heap of bots to deal with right off the bat, but my immediate goal is gonna to be to get my stuff and deal with those mortars so my team can assault the gunship factory in relative peace. To do this, I need my AC-8 autocannon. If Helldivers ever had a jack of all trades, it would be this weapon. It handles pretty much any threat the bots have with its explosive damage and relatively high armor penetration, but it can require some precision to use effectively. Aim for weak spots and this thing will recycle just about any bot in a few hits. Because it is such an effective support weapon, we do have a bit more freedom in what we choose to take with the rest of our loadout since we can rely on the autocannon to do a lot of the heavy lifting. For example, I took the Diligence Counter Sniper as a primary because I wanted something that could deal with the little bots well had some range and punch to it. This gun pops devastators in just one easy headshot or a couple of shots to their guts can shred them in half. That said, feel free to swap this one out for your favorite primary if you'd like. It's not super important for how the loadout works, but I did want to showcase it since it's one of my favorites. For stratagems, we're taking the Eagle Airstrike because, well, it's the best stratagem in the game, y'all. Blows up hull patrols, takes out factory striders with just two goes, and can wipe out fabricators with ease. But the more exciting part of this loadout is my new favorite stratagem, the MG Emplacement. The MG Emplacement might not seem like much at first glance, but this beast is just two heavy machine guns strapped together, far more accuracy, and a massive plate of armor to protect you from return fire. The Liberty just flows freely through my veins whenever I fire this thing. The sheer amount of firepower is enough to take on three hull patrols before running dry, including big fellas like hulks or even factory striders. To give the bots something else to worry about while we shred them with high caliber rounds, we also have the autocannon sentry. It hits much harder compared to the rocket one, but it does have less ammo and a shorter range. That said, when it comes to putting big holes in dumb bots, it's hard to beat the raw firepower of the autocannon sentry. We'll be setting it up alongside our MG emplacement or using it to cover our retreat. Finally, we're also taking the Senator, since it pairs well with our primary and stun grenades to set up easier shots with our autocannon or eagle airstrikes. If y'all like unloading round after round into the enemies of democracy, then consider liking the video as well. That one click helps out a lot with my mission to spread cooperation and team play to the hell diving community. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to the channel for more videos. Now that you know what we're using, let's talk about how we're going to use it to help our team. Our primary objectives this game are going to be learning how to regroup after splitting up, which I have to do pretty immediately here because that fight at the start of the match scattered my team to the wind. But next we want to learn how to recognize and hold good positions because our loadout is tailor made to draw a line in the sand and dare any clanker to cross it. Between our autocannon, our sentry, and our MG emplacement, we can rain all kinds of hell down on the bots from relative safety but we do have to be smart about where we put them. Last and most importantly we want to react to what our squad is doing. All these skills I've described so far fall under the umbrella of situational awareness, but I think framing it as reacting to your squad's actions is the easiest way to put it into practice. This is why I tell y'all it does not matter if you're a 40 year old dad who only plays one mission per day or John Helldiver himself. If you're in my game, I can work with you. The way this works is I base my actions off of where my squad is and what they're doing. With just those two pieces of information, I can come up with a game plan to eliminate the enemy and keep my squad together. So let me show y'all how that's done. We started the game off in a bit of a mess. Just everybody had to go their own way because of all the threats that we were dealing with. But once I found myself split off from my two other teammates who went in opposite directions, I made it my goal to get them all grouped together. So the way that I did that was I took out a medium outpost that was in between S3 and H2, and then I ran over to help H2 finish off the oil part of the launch the missile objective. 
Once that objective was done and there was no, you know, fabricators or anything in between us and S3, it's a pretty easy decision for H2 to just follow me to help out S3. So now we found ourselves on a nice cliff, and this kind of goes into what I was talking about with positioning. This is an elevated position where I can easily set up my sentries and my HD HMG emplacement, and I can take out all these bots just with no problem at all. It is the easiest thing in the world because they're not targeting me, and even if they are, the HMG emplacement has a ton of health. So I'm able to take out all the Devastators, a couple of Hulks, and I see a patrol coming in behind me, which I can wipe up pretty easily. But the point of me doing this, you know, setting up on this position, is because I noticed that S3's not really doing an objective. He's near a stratagem jammer that has already been destroyed. So if I want him to move on with me and H2, I need to eliminate all the enemies in the immediate area. Because once they're dead, he's going to want to follow me and H2 to the next objective. And even if he doesn't, that's totally fine. As long as I'm with one other teammate, I'm happy. As you can see, we were able to regroup. We did another part of the primary and we're heading to the last part before launching the missile. But my teammates start pinging out these heavy towers in the distance, which signifies that those are big outposts since there's two towers on each. I don't really want to go fight that myself. So I ping a direction, they give me the affirmative and we make our way up this cliff to take on the first heavy outpost together. But I hope y'all can see that this regrouping we did, it was not an accident. It was a direct result of what I chose to do. If I wanted to go off on my own and complete the mission by myself, I can do that, y'all. But that's not how I have fun in this game. I have fun when I'm working together with other people to accomplish a goal. So by paying attention to where my team is and what they're doing, I can then react to those two pieces of information to get the outcome that I want. And even if things don't go my way, which it often does not, I can still make good decisions about playing around my team while they do whatever the hell they want. I'm never gonna bark orders at anybody. I'm never gonna tell anybody how to play the game. This is your time to have fun and I respect that. But I do wanna play as a team. That's how I have my fun. So that means I follow people around, I do objectives that are in between where my two teammates are or my three teammates, and I try to corral them to work together with me so we can complete the mission with ease and take on these big fights and get those awesome cinematic moments, which y'all are going to see one here in a second. Keeping with the theme of situational awareness and reacting to my team, I push through the middle of this heavy outpost, mostly because I'm looking for samples because Commissar Kai is broke at the moment. But I start taking out these devastators that have their backs towards me with the auto cannon, and I notice that my teammates are not here anymore, and I see that bot flare go up. So after I've reloaded my auto cannon, I make the decision to bail, because I don't really know exactly where they are, and as you can see, they've gained quite a bit of distance on me. And with another, or with a bot drop coming in and another heavy outpost just around the corner, I need to get set up to deal with this bot drop so we don't get pinched from two sides. That's usually how you end up getting surrounded and killed in this game. So again, we look for that elevated position. We're on a cliff. I tossed out my auto cannon sentry. I dumped another auto cannon because I was low on ammo. I just needed the backpack. And now I'm just trying to get away from this hail of laser fire that is just filling me with holes. My auto cannon sentry is doing a good job. And then you, as you can see, one of my teammates threw a stun grenade. They see what I'm doing. They are reacting to what I'm doing, and they're helping me out. Me and my auto cannon sentry are able to clean up most of that bot drop pretty, pretty easily, actually. And my teammate S3 over there is just doing a good job of spotting for me. He's also helping me out with his AMR. I called down my HMG emplacement because of that spotting that S3 did. He even pinged out that there were patrols coming, so I knew I could take him out from this position with the HMG. And he's going to continue to do so. You can see him popping shots in the patrol there with the AMR. Pings another patrol out, and I'm going to take that one out too, because these are both near the next objective. You see that smokestack in the distance? That's the next heavy outpost. So I'm not just picking fights needlessly. I am doing what I think is right at the time. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can play the game, y'all. You can stealth or whatever, but this is how I like to do it. So after we've taken out all the bots and all the patrols, we're able to move on together again as a unit. Now we've made it to the final primary objective, and this is kind of one of those hold the line things. We have to wait until the missile's in the air before we can move on. So I dump down my MG emplacement, and I'm just looking for targets, but most of the bots are being dropped on the other side of that rock, and I'm not able to hit them. So I go out and toss out my sentry, try to help out my teammates, but I'm going to go back and sit on my MG emplacement because I'm going to trust that they can handle that bot drop themselves. 
I know that there's going to be patrols in the area and they're going to be making their way towards us. So again, I want to prevent that whole encirclement thing that can happen by drawing that line in the sand and just telling the clankers to screw off. They're not going to be able to get past me while I'm up here on my big gun and I'm going to be able to lay down tons of fire with some eagles in my back pocket if I need them. But this one piece of scrap decided to jump on me and set me on fire when I blew him up. So I had to abandon my gun for a second. Now I'm getting kind of pounded by these two hulks, but S3 is going to be a champ to throw out a stun grenade for me, which lets me kill both of them in like, what, two seconds? But we're able to hold the line because our team is over there doing the objective, holding it down, and S3 is giving me support whenever he thinks that I need it. But I do almost kill him on accident here by hitting that flaming barrel, which sets him on fire while he's shooting at something. Thankfully he survives, and we're able to take out the last few bots before we get the missile in the air. But since my MG emplacement's low on ammo, and I know that the bots are still going to be coming from that direction, I'm going to be looking for some other solutions. i still got a few more bullets in my MG emplacement, so I'll use those up whenever I can. I see that patrol on its way, so I'm just going to use the last of its ammo, because why not? But as soon as I run out, I'm going to push up with H2. H2's in a good position to lay down a lot of fire on this patrol and I want to make sure I'm helping them out. Another aspect of situational awareness is being or is being aware of what your team has for ordnance. I know that H2 has a grenade launcher and a resupply backpack and I know that S3 has an AMR and a resupply backpack. So I'm pretty confident that S3 is giving us that overwatch from behind even though I don't know that for a fact there's just not reasonably anything else he would be doing. And then H2 is able to push up with his grenade launcher and my auto cannon support to wipe out the rest of that patrol. We have a bot drop coming in, but the missile's about ready to launch, so we don't really got to worry about fighting this one. I'm just going to throw a couple of eagles at it to just kind of slow them down, deal with what I can, until the missile's in the air and we can move on. I get a decent hit with my eagle and S3 presses that button, so we're out of here and we're heading towards extraction. H2 moved ahead a little bit. He mentioned in chat that he was grabbing up them super samples, so we're just going to go regroup on him since the extraction's in that direction anyway. But this is going to be a hell of a fight getting to extraction, and there are a few things I want to talk about during this fight, so I'll point them out as they happen, but I'll also just let y'all enjoy the show a bit. Because when there's a lot of bots going on, we do still need to think about our positioning, right? This is a little bit of an incline. It's the only one I have access to, so I toss down my, uh, my sentry, and I start laying into him with the auto cannon. This is a lot of firepower to put down range, and it allows H2 to move up with his grenade launcher and put some serious hurt on those bots. Between all the dust and all the smoke going on, I couldn't really see the targets too clearly, so I laid off on the auto cannon a bit, and I went to target, or I went to tagging those big enemies and just popping little bots whenever I could. I'm still trying to help out my team, but I'm not quite ready to move up yet. S3 and M or H2 are do both moving up for me. I've got a lot of firepower, my sentry's still kicking, so I might as well stay here until I'm encouraged to move, which that rocket to the face might have just done. We did get a new teammate in K4 dropping in to help us get to extraction, but as you can see, that blue beam is still quite a bit in the distance, and there's still a lot of bots between us and it. So I'm still just laying down whatever firepower I can, trying to pay attention to what my teammates are doing. And I see that we're all fighting in the same direction, so I'm pretty happy with how things have been going. But I do notice here in a minute that there's some fire coming in from behind us, and this is going to start to cause a real issue. I get stabbed in the back, and I notice that bot flare, and the dropship's coming in. So that means that that was called in a while ago. I see a ton of bots coming in behind us, and I know that if I don't address this, this will get bad really fast. One of my teammates calls out in chat that they were behind us, so I ping in this direction, and I start hauling butt. I just want to try to show them that, like, hey, there's a bottleneck right here. I'm going to cover you until you can get here. So I lay down the fire with the auto cannon. If I had my sentries up, I would be dropping it. I see that Hulk chasing my teammate, so I'm going to toss out the stun grenade and try to take him out with the auto cannon. But I was able to get K4 and S3 to safety. Now, H2 is in a kind of precarious spot right now, and I can't help him too much because the line of sight was becoming a problem. I would have had to go around the rock to see what the hell was shooting at him. Now from the direction of laser fire, I can tell that they're going to be coming in between that rock and that wall. So I'm very comfortable with calling down the MG emplacement here. This is a good position for me to hold and fight because I'm going to be durable enough to tank a few rocket volleys and I'm have a way and I have far more than I need firepower wise to take out all of these devastators just by my lonesome. 
I'm hoping that this is going to give H2 a little bit of breathing room so he can come regroup with us because the extraction's getting real close, y'all. We're very close to it, but we still have this army of bots to fight through. Now, I'm going to stay on my MG emplacement until I run out of ammo as a general rule, unless my team moves on. Then I'll leave it. But since I see that incendiary breaker fire coming in from K4 and I see another patrol in the distance, I'm just going to sit here and take out whatever I can. While I do this, I still want to be thinking about how I can know where my team is and react to what they're doing. I'm about down to sticks and harsh language at this point, so I am trying to ration my ammo as appropriately as possible. But S3 calls out a ping on another patrol, so I'm going to target down the heavy and the rocket devastators first, with a priority given to the rocket devastators, and obviously any bots calling in bot drops. But I get blown up, and I know that now is time to move, because I am desperately out of ammo. Now this fight went on for a total of eight minutes, y'all. It was desperate from the start, but it got worse over time. I was able to stick with H2 for the most part, but we, see we have Factory Strider coming in, we got a Hulk pushing us, and... At this point, I'm just tired. I'm just missing my shots, and this Hulk is now turning at me. I've got no stems. I've got no grenades. I'm in dire straits. So I try to stagger it by shooting it in the leg, but then I get caught up on whatever the heck this is, and I get a little bit set on fire, but I'm just trying to get away from it. I try to get a greedy reload off, and I get chopped in half. This is my fourth and last death of this match. I cut out the other deaths because they were just... I got blown up by a 380 twice, and I think I got shot in the face by a rocket once. But I am able to drop back in on a different area, so I'm still near my teammates, but I wasn't in that same tight spot. But I don't have my stuff. My auto cannon is gone, so I'm going to have to rely on the diligence for now. Hulk's around the corner, but I'm not going to panic this time. That death kind of reset my mental. I'm ready to go. So I stun him, take out his vents. And I get blown up, but I'm going to start taking out these Devastators and working my way back towards my team. Because right now, I'm not in a lot of danger. There's a couple of Devastators, there was a Hulk, but the enemies are not focused on me. So they must be focused on my teammates. That gives me a little bit of an opportunity to make some room for myself and kind of help them out with whatever I can see. Because as you can see, these Hulks are not paying attention to me, so I'm able to just pop them in the back, help out K4 a little bit, and secure this location. I am able to fight my way out. I go back and I grab my stuff, and now we're finally at extraction, y'all. After eight minutes of fighting, we finally got here together. We had another big fight at extraction, but in the interest of time, I'll just say I hope this video has been helpful for understanding how to react to your teammates in order to facilitate team play. If y'all practice these skills, particularly being aware of where your teammates are and what they're doing, I think you'll have a lot more success in your games and maybe even make some new friends along the way. Next up, I'll be doing a full gameplay commentary against the bugs, so if you want to see more huge fights and see how I corral my teammates in real time, be sure to tune on in. I managed to drop another 400 kill banger with this one, and using a pretty unique loadout to boot. So I hope you all have enjoyed it. But until next time, this is Commissar Kai, signing out.